What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're working on the old ovation here. We're doing a little uh, drive shaft cog swap. I've never done it, so it's going to be a learning experience for me. But uh, as always guys, if you like these videos, please subscribe, share, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, but yeah, let's get into uh, looking at this ovation. Here. Okay, so this is my 99 Yamaha Ovation. Uh, if you haven't seen the other videos, check it out. Uh, me and Jeff went and picked this up and a phaser. Kind of both part sled currently, but uh, the goal is uh, that right there is the phaser engine or part of the phaser engine, <laughs> the bottom end anyway. Uh, so this Ovation is going to have a phaser engine in it with an AN pipe. It's ported, all kinds of goodies. Um, the problem we're currently having is there's no suspension in it. Never got the original one. I only got the 121 from the phaser with a track. So what that requires you to do is use the phaser clutches and chain case and phaser drive shaft which we've done excuse me i'm a pig um but the problem we had here is this is our ovation drive shaft you can tell the track pitch is way off compared to the phaser so you can't use the ovation drive shaft the cogs are wrong but this phaser drive shaft um the first of all the threads on the end of the drive shaft are halfway cooked but uh there was a snap speedo pin in the end of it which I guess I could have just left, but I, that bothers me. I want a Speedo on it. So I tried getting it out, couldn't get it out. I used a little pick for here and there, couldn't get it. Tried drilling it out, snapped the drill bit in there. You know, I'm not dealing with that. That's a disaster. So the Ovation drive shaft itself is the same as the phaser. I looked the part numbers up. They're the same, but the cogs are wrong. So we're going to have to press the cogs off the phaser drive shaft, press the cogs off the Ovation drive shaft, and then press the phaser cogs back onto the, the Ovation drive shaft. Um, so bear with me here. I'm going to uh, start taking some measurements. I've never done this before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the end of the shaft, right at the very end, to this outside edge of the cog. Same with the opposite side. I'm going to write that down. I'm then going to measure probably center to center of the cogs or maybe the distance between the outer uh, sections of the inside of the cogs. And then my buddy James actually gave me a good tip. He said, uh, use a hacksaw and just put a little notch, a uh, little notch in on either side of the old cogs. And then that way, once you press it off, you can actually measure really accurately to the little notches you made. So we're going to do that as well. So bear with me. I'm going to get some measurements here and then uh, we'll head over to the press and we'll start pressing stuff off. And uh, me and you are both going to learn at the same time here. So <laughs> wish me luck. All right, so here's our drawing. You can tell by my sick artistic skills that that is the spline side of the shaft. That is the threaded side. So I went from outside of the shaft to the outside of the cog, outside of the shaft to the outside of the cog, center to center. And then I don't know if you can tell, but if you look really close, I did mark the shaft with the little hacksaw blade and all the edges of them. So... We'll press the ovation cogs off first. So got it in my press here. Just gonna press the shaft through the cogs. Um, I assume that's gonna be fine, I think. <laughs> so uh, give me a second, I'll set the camera up and we'll press this through and then we'll do the same with the phaser drive shaft as well. All right, so as you can see, we've got the uh, cogs off the ovation shaft. So this is the shaft we're gonna use. Uh, took a little adjustments with the press. I kept having to adjust it up as the shaft got farther through uh, the cogs, but that's fine. Um, so I'm gonna do the same again with the phaser drive shaft. I'm not gonna film it because it's just gonna be the same thing all over again, but I'll see you in a second once I get these cogs off and then we'll put the shafts next to each other and mark uh, where these new cogs gotta go. All right, so we got our two shafts off i uh, stood them flat on the surface facing up so they were both on a flat surface and you can see our hacksaw mark on the old phaser drive shaft and our sharpie marks uh, where is it on the new ones this one was actually out like a 16th for some reason but maybe i uh pulled my tape more and i had that little bit of slack at the end of the tape when i measured it oops but uh, i think we'll be okay i'm actually going to hit these with a hacksaw blade as well just in case 
um, when the cog's going past it wipes that mark off. So I'll put a little hacksaw mark and I'll clean the shaft itself a little bit with some scotch Brite pads so there's no problems with the cogs going on. And then uh, we'll see you in a minute. We'll start pressing those cog, the, the new cogs, or sorry, the phaser cogs on our good drive shaft. So we will see you in a minute. Just for fun, I tried to put this one on by hand and it actually went on by hand fairly easily. I had to force it a bit. But I think the reason why is because these ones are actually notched. You can see the notch in there and they use a hose clamp to tighten it. So that was actually easy. I just pushed it on by hand and it was super simple. I, I lined it up with the mark perfectly and slammed the clamp down. I also flipped the cogs the other way. As you can see, they're uh, pretty worn. The, te the teeth are a bit worn. I should most likely replace it, but this sled is getting a very minimal budget put into it. So these are going to be fine. I just rotated them. I don't really see um, a, why it would matter if I flipped it. The cog is not offset on the overall width. Um, I don't see a problem with the hoses clamps being on the outside, so it's fine. Um, even though I can do it by hand, I am going to put it in the press to do the last one just so I can kind of show you guys how to do it. Um, so let me set that up and uh, we'll press that last cog on and then we're done. Okay, so we have our drive shaft back in the press. So we're going to be pressing this shaft through our last cog. You can kind of tell where it's got to go. I put our mark on this side. Sorry, you can't see it, but the mark's here. But you can basically tell where it is. It's the edge of the wear line. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to press this in really slowly. I'll probably have to readjust um, this a couple times because I'm pretty sure the drive shaft's going to hit the ground um, before it gets to where it's got to go. But we'll see. So we will uh, start pressing away. As you can see, the shaft is moving through that cog super easily. One thing I should mention too that I forgot make sure you have these cogs clocked properly when you put it back on the shaft like you see how the teeth line up on the cogs you can actually um, put it and it you can do it wrong and it'd be offset so this cog would be not lining up with this it'd be like in here or something so make sure you have them clocked correctly and when you're pressing it on make sure your cog is as much support as you can um, so that you're not trying to really flex this cog when you're pressing the shaft through although there's not much resistance and it should be fine but anyways um, so let's uh, start pressing this through. Okay, that's very close. I'm gonna pull it out of the press and I'm gonna do the last tiny little bit on the bench. But that is basically how you do it there. So yeah, we are just to say almost at our mark. So I'll go do this by hand put that clamp on and then we will be done. And uh, there you have it. Did all the measurements uh, according to here and we're pretty much bang on, man. So that's it. That was actually super simple, not hard at all. I was kind of worried about it, not pressing them on in the right spots, but it's almost dummy proof if you can, you know, uh, line up your marks. This one's a little difficult too because, well, a little more difficult because I'm swapping cogs to a different shaft. If you're just going um, new cogs on your same shaft, which most people probably are, um, you, when you mark the when you mark these there's no way you can screw it up right uh, i'm going from a sh old shaft to a new shaft but if you're just pressing new cogs on an existing shaft it's super easy mark them and press the cogs on <laughs> into the marks and but it's always good though make sure you, you you do the measurements as well so that when you're done you can double check to confirm that everything is uh correct um but yeah that's it that turned out super easy uh check out the channel for more i got all kinds of stuff i don't normally do too many like how to things like this um, but if that's what you guys want to see and you got uh, something you want to see done, leave it in the comments. Uh, if I have it around here and I can possibly do a how-to on it, I'll do that for you guys. Um, but thanks for watching. Check out the other videos and uh, we will see you later. Bye. Hey, subscribe to the channel.